since today is the anniversary of Keith Moon's passing, um, Access TV just aired an episode of The Final 24 that was based on Keith Moon. They aired it a few days ago, actually, but I figured, you know, that's actually very appropriate because it's within the same week as the anniversary of Keith, so... I have literally been writing in to the creators of that show every season since they started begging them to do a Keith Moon episode because there is so much to say there about this entire story to where I was like, it would make a perfect episode for this. If handled right. If handled wrong, I'll probably be very pissed off, but I am happy to report they actually did it really, really well on this one for once, which is more than I could say for how I was feeling about the Judy Garland episodes of such shows last year. I forget if there was one of Final 24 for Judy, but I know Autopsy had one, and I know there was, like, the final hours of did one. I want to say, you know, maybe Final 24 also did one. I, I would have to check, but all of them did it wrong, and I was very upset, so... I was more than a little nervous with this. I was like, please tell me they did it right. That they did Mooney justice. They did. First off. I found it very strange that they didn't include Tony Fletcher in this anywhere, since he's like the Moon Man historian. But I mean, they did get Richard Barnes, so alright, fair enough. But basically, I mean, a lot of this episode, more or less, to be totally fair, uh, seemed more like a mini-biography on Keith, which is fine. I mean, they had a lot of details about his excess, <laughs> if you will. Which, I mean, again, when it comes to Keith, you cannot tell anything about Keith without talking about his drinking, his drug use. I mean, that just, it's par for the course with Keith. So, especially for how he died, I mean, obviously we have to talk about that, and for the whole thing to make sense of what it all led up to and to really understand the full scope of just how heartbreaking it is the way he died and the particular drug that killed him was the one that was supposed to save him you have to have the full backstory for that to really have the same emotional impact other than well he OD'd on him and Everett have a nice day and have that be it you know but <laughs> No, this was a drug that was never, ever supposed to be administered in an outpatient basis. Whoever prescribed him this, I really hope they lost their license, because that was, like, gross malpractice, if you ask me. The details they included here, I was very, very happy that they got things correct, because a lot of people who've tried to tell the Keith Moon story, they either embellish... Or they downplay. They never just tell it like it is. Even though it's very much documented, like, heavily, it's not hard to find this information in the correct information. They just don't do their due diligence because it feels more interesting to them to tell the myths of Keith Moon or try to make it sound not as bad as a really was. One or the other. I'm like, can you just get it right for once? This one did. I mean, they did leave things out that I think could have been included, but for the most part, they did a really good job with this, and it was done tastefully. It was done respectfully. I, on one hand, was kind of surprised they got Annette in there to talk about him. On the other hand, she did just write a book about Keith, specifically. So I'm kind of not surprised on that hand that you know, she'd come out of the woodwork now. But I mean, on the other hand, you know... I hope she's had a good life since Keith. You know, I wish her the best. I really hope she was able to move on and have a good life, but um, more than could be said for his ex. That is just a tragic tale, but that is another story for another day. They even had Mandy pop in for like a brief little snippet, which I was like, it was so good to see her. Like she almost never pops up on these things. So I was like, oh my God, they actually tracked down Mandy. Holy crap. And they got her willing to talk about her dad. That, like, never happens. Every once in a blue moon, you'll get a little snippet with her, and that's about it. So, uh, they had Kenny Jones in there, which seemed an interesting choice for people to talk about Keith's death, given, you know, he replaced him. But 
I'm gonna be honest, I did not realize he was at that party that Keith, Keith was at the night before he died. I did not realize, for as many times as I've seen the photos of that night, that that was Kenny. I feel really dumb in hindsight, it should have been obvious, I swear I never realized that's who he was talking to in that one photo. Full disclosure, full stop. But it was kind of cool hearing his take on things. Granted, Pete and Roger were nowhere in this. I mean, obviously they showed clips of them and talked about them, but they were not interviewed for this. Which seems a shame, but I can understand them not wanting to keep covering the same ground over and over and over again. But on the other hand, given that this is like the one special like this that I've seen do it right where Keith is concerned, it's a little sad that they didn't want to be involved in this one, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I was just very pleasantly surprised that they did it well. Also pleasantly surprised at one little, uh, footage snippet. It must have been from the Hollywood Vampires days, but, um, all of a sudden I noticed on the edge of the screen, hello, Mickey Dolenz. <laughs> I mean, I know he was in the Vampires, but I just, for whatever reason with this special, I was not expecting Mickey to pop up. I mean, like, they were mostly showing Alice Cooper and Keith Moon in this clip, but on the outskirts of the side screen, hey, Mickey! <laughs> but no, it was very tastefully done. They did a really good job with their recreations of the course of events. They got a guy who really looked like Keith considerably. I mean, obviously, not a perfect clone, but given how these shows usually go with that and how far off they usually are, I was impressed that they found somebody that more or less does look a lot like Keith. Granted, uh, he looked like younger Keith, but beggars can't be choosers. They found somebody that looks like Keith at some point in his life, anyway. Um, so, for what it's worth, I mean, he had very unique-looking features, so I guess um, if you can find somebody that looks, that looks like him from any period of his life close enough, because, yeah, that. But, um, but aside from that, I just, I thought it was really, really well done. I am glad that I waited till today now to watch it. Was it emotional as a fan for me? Yes, but I knew it was going to be either way anyway, even if I had to watch it just because of what day it is, but... Oh, man. You know who I would have really liked to have seen interviewed for this? Paul McCartney. I mean, not only as a fan, but just as the person who was holding the party that Keith was at, and the person who was sitting across the table from him all night. I would really love to hear what exactly he has to say about that night. That would be a, a unique angle on this that I don't think I have ever heard Paul talk about that. That would have been a nice touch. I mean, I understand. Good luck getting Paul McCartney to sign on for much anything like this, but it, it would be really cool if somebody could get him to do it once, even if it were, like, just a standalone interview. I think it'd be really interesting. But I understand why they couldn't get him for this. It's fine. But, um, honestly, uh, maybe they could have gotten him, but he wanted too much money, which probably why they couldn't get Peter Roger either. Like, let's be real. But, um... I do think that would be one interesting take that we've not yet seen. But apart from that, you know, aside from if they could have gotten Peter Roger, I can't think of much any way that they could have done this better. They actually did it justice, so very pleasantly surprised if you have the opportunity to watch this, if you're a fan. I mean, ultimately, are you probably going to learn details of this that you didn't already know? No. I definitely knew all, everything in this already, but it was still just nice to see it done correctly for a change. So, anyways, I'm kind of babbling, but I just wanted to weigh in my two cents that I thought it was well done and that it's worth the watch if you have the opportunity. So, anyway guys, that is it for this one. So as usual, you know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe. Hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. Have you seen this? What did you think of it, good, bad, or otherwise? Let me know that as well as anything else down below. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Etsy, everything and more. It's all down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. Anyway, guys, until next time, bye-bye.